So to start, uh, I would start with the rats to explain a little bit the, the rats, um, and and then I will talk about the whites um, to stay in the generalities of how we work and uh, yeah. So as a, the main part, what we're selling now is the 19s because with all of our wines, except of those two cuvées, Good Ale and Franc Ordinaire, we do a longer élevage, uh, a longer aging, and uh, it's all about like uh, normally 18 to 20 months. Uh, and so that's why now is uh, the 19 vintage uh, coming on the market. Uh, and 19 is for us a very, uh, in our opinion, a very classic German vintage. So it's a little bit later. We started to pick um, uh, after the mid of September. So maybe 18th, 19th September, we started picking. Um, it was during picking, it was rather cold weather. Um, we had rainy periods during picking and before as well. Um, summer, but summer was really hot. So we had uh, several heat spikes with more than 40 degrees uh, during summer. Uh, but at the end of August here, it, it cooled down and and we got some rain and uh, that's why it was delaying harvest uh, quite a bit actually. Uh, so it's uh, fruit wise and acidity wise, it's a uh, it's a colder vintage type uh, and uh, what we prefer and uh, you're having for the reds you're having a lighter color uh, and uh, the whites they're having quite uh, quite good acidity so that's in general for the vintage and then to start um, with uh, the, the our entry level spade burgunder the 19 uh, the entry level Spätburgunder is um, basically from less soil. It's all, it's coming from different vineyards. Uh, like our entry level wine is always uh, a blend of different vineyards and a blend of different origins, kind of. Uh, one big chunk comes from the Kaiserstuhl on, on less slopes, and, uh, and another chunk comes from uh, a smaller towns around Staufen, where we are but from the same soil type, it's less. Um, in this cuvee we have, in, in, in 2019, we have about 30% whole cluster. Um, so in every red, actually, we work with a certain amount of whole cluster. Uh, it depends always on the vintage, how much whole cluster we run. It depends on the health of the fruit, how much whole cluster. It depends a little bit on the age of the wines. It depends very much on the clone of the wines. Uh, so, but in in every wine what we make, we try to bring a, a certain portion of whole cluster in it. Uh, so for the entry level, it's thirty percent. So there was like two thirds we fermented completely destemmed. De One third we fermented uh, uh, as a completely one hundred percent whole cluster, and then. They did aging separately in, in separate barrels, and then at the end we planted it together. So the wine stayed for, as I said, for 18 months in barrel. Then we wrecked it to tank three weeks or four weeks before bottling, uh, and then we bottled it. There is no new oak in this in this wine. Uh, it's all used barrels, standard burgundy barrel. Um, of course, it's an entry level wine, so the yields they are a little bit higher than, than for our single vineyard wines, um, but it's not crazy either. 19 was in general uh, yielding had been way lower than uh, in 18, for, for example. Like, it was just less fruit, and, and then we had to cut up a lot of fruit uh, on the ground. Getting nice. <laughs> and yeah, so then the next uh, step up is, uh, is our uh, Cuvée Vulcan. And it's in 19 for the first time a plant of two different vineyards as well, but they're coming all from volcanic soil, um, as the name says. And uh, 
One part, uh, one plot is uh, on the east side of the Kaiserstuhl, facing more eastwards uh, in direction of the Black Forest. You have it's underneath a forest, and uh, so it's a quite high, quite high altitude for for the uh, for the Kaiserstuhl. And the other part is coming from the western part of the Kaiserstuhl, but south facing from Achkarn from the Achkarner Schlossberg, uh, which is a pretty hot vineyard. And so in nineteen. Uh, the difference in the fruit was really the one was bringing in the freshness and and uh, some lightness and uh, and the other part was bringing in really structure and, and ripeness and and at the end it's a plant of uh, of, of the, those both vineyards um it's in this plant it's it's uh 50 percent whole cluster and 50 percent destemmed and it was the same like one, the whole cluster part got fermented separately. It was 100% whole cluster, and the other part was completely destemmed. Uh, same procedure as, as for all our reds. Uh, it stayed 18 months uh, untouched in barrel. Um, then we wrecked it before bottling. Uh, it stayed three, four, four weeks in, in tank, and then it went to bottle. Um, yeah. Then we have a new wine uh, in 19 from a new vineyard, from a new own vineyard. Uh, it's um, Am Kreuz and it's a, it's a Pinot coming from Kneis soil, so a rather acidic soil. Um, it's coming directly from Staufen. And it's, it's mainly old Pinot wines, but there is a, a smaller portion of Pinot Gris in it as well. Uh, we co-fermented it because it's like co-planted in the vineyard and so we just chucked it all together in one tank and it was 100% whole cluster. Uh, uh, it did a long carbonic maceration phase like for 12-14 days uh, it stayed in tank untouched and then we did a slight extraction at the end. So we put stomped the fruit, crushed it a little bit and then we pressed it maybe after 20 days. And yeah, same as for every red, it all spent uh, 18 months in, in barrel, only used barrels, uh, and then it got bottled. Uh, yeah, so then the next wine would be, I guess, uh, Bellenspät Burgunder. Um, Bellenspät Burgunder is uh, another like single vineyard wine. Uh, it's on uh, on limestone clay soil, but uh, this part, compared to other limestone soils, what we're having is has a little bit higher um, scent uh, part in the soil and the clay. So it's sandy clay actually. It's a mixture a little bit. It's coming from quite yellow. Uh, um, sand limestone and um, uh, it's totally west faced the slopes um, yeah it, it, it's two different plots one plot is with French clones and the other pl plot is with, uh, with German clones it's all clones uh, but yeah different plant material and um, we picked them together, uh, half of it dis we distemmed, half of it uh, stayed whole bunch. Um, it was a fermentation maybe about 18 days, 18-19 um, days, and then we pressed it, uh, went to barrel, and same, like 18-20 months, Elevage went to like then we wreck it. Uh, for the wrecking, I can say uh, we wreck everything with gas. So push out the wine up in the barrel with gas. So there's no pumping. Goes to tank um, and then bottled after four weeks. And then the next wine would be Kanzel. Um, Kanzel Spätburgunder is uh, as well from limestone soil. It's uh, uh, 
it's a different soil a little bit. It's uh, very iron rich, so it's a red clay. It's a more heavy red clay. And the vineyard is east faced, or south east faced. It's getting dark, right? And um, yeah, so what else? So it, it's um, southeast faced. Uh, there is quite a bit of forest around, so it's like really a cooler spot. Um, it's already quite high in altitude, so it's probably on 350 meters. What's for us already pretty good. And, um, and it's sitting just above a limestone cliff. And uh, it's called Kanzel because uh, the Kanzel is like this part where the breach or breach in the church, where it stands like above the crowd and, and, and preaching. And, uh, and that's like kind of if you go to the cliff, so you're above the village and you can preach down to the people. <laughs> that's why actually the name comes from. Um, yeah. So this one um, was 50% whole cluster as well. Uh, there is like an, an old German clone, it's 40 year old win, uh, wines. And there is long, younger wines, uh, it's a uh, Selection Massal, a French Selection Massal. Um, and the main part is a Viso Selection from Von Romane. And, uh, but there are young wines, so this part we just stemmed and the older part we left as whole cluster. Um, and then again, same procedure, or 18, 20 months in barrel, tracking it, modeling it. Uh, and the last red wine would be uh, the Möhling. It's coming from the same vineyard site as the Kanzel. Uh, it's called Ölberg, the vineyard itself. But as we're doing land wine, we can't use uh, the technical term of the vineyard. So we have always to find different names for it. And the Möhling is the small tree which is running underneath uh, this, like the vineyard. And so the Möhling compared to the Kanzel is uh, more south exposed. So this is southeast, but there it's already where the slope is turning slightly more southwards. As, and it's uh, way more exposed because there is no forest uh, on top of, of the hill. and. Uh, so it's riper than, than the cancer always. So it's getting uh, another ripeness and, uh, and a different structure. Uh, and in this year as well, uh, it was 50% whole cluster and 50% distant. Uh, we would actually like to go higher there in whole cluster, but in 19, uh, fruit was not as clean as we would have liked it. And so and then it's better to destem a little bit more to have more juice, get the fermentation going, uh, just to be on the safe side as we vinify it all without sulfur. Uh, yeah, we don't fuck around. <laughs> and um, yeah, okay, that's for the reds. Oh, no. Then the other red, what we having is the, the Grand Ordinaire, what is our real entry level red with a short, uh, short aging. Um, so it's the first time we, uh, before we was doing the Baden Nouveau and we, we was doing always early bottlings with it. So we bottled it already in, in November and, uh, but actually we didn't like it, like to do a real primeur. It's, uh, it's too, uh, yeah, it's too young and, and the wine is not stable and, uh, it's not what we're really looking for in a wine. And, but we, we kept the same principle, so we did a 100% carbonic fermentation, so no extraction at all. Uh, after 20 days we pressed, no, not 20, after 12 days we pressed it. Uh, we let it sit in tank, ferment it dry in tank, and then it went to barrel until February. And in February we wrecked it and, and bottled it kind of immediately. Uh, there is no sulfur. And yeah, so it's our our new wine, like a fresh wine, and uh, but with a slightly bit of aging, uh, just just to settle it out a little bit uh, after the fermentation, to chill it a little bit down over winter. 
Yeah, so that's red. I don't know, continuing or? <laughs> yeah, so after the little rainfall, <laughs> the tiny, uh, now the whites. <laughs> um, so some generalities about the whites, what we do. Uh, all our whites, they're getting a um, whole bunch pressed. So we don't descend them before they go on the press. Uh, we all press them with a screw press. And the screw press is um, quite good uh, because it's not so soft and not so, so gentle to the fruit. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit more rustic uh, because uh, you're getting higher pressure and there are some chains in it uh, to break down the mar if you're opening the press. And uh, yeah, all this is extracting a little bit on, on the skins, on the, on the stems, and, uh, and what we actually find quite interesting for the whites, giving it a little bit more texture than without actually having a skin contact uh, for a while. Um, and it brings in the mast quite a bit of solids uh, and we use those solids like uh, for a big portion of it uh, for fermentation. So after pressing the whites with this press, uh, we bring them in a tank, we let them sit uh, overnight and then the next day we barrel them down, all by gravity. And uh, then we take then like the solids they're, they're sinking down on the on the tank uh, on the bottom of the tank, and then we check the, those solids and we take most of them everything what's nice and creamy, beige, uh, all those we take and put add them to the barrels, and then somewhere there's coming a layer of of more thicker um, gray, green, black, it's dirt. Uh, it's not then actually lees or something, uh, it's dirt and those part of course we don't use for fermentation. And yeah, so we ferment our whites with quite a bit of solids. Uh, this means uh, they're getting quite reductive during fermentation and, and during aging. And that's exactly what we are looking for. Um, everything like reds and whites we ferment without adding sulfur. And uh, so all the fermentation goes through yeah, naturally with natural yeast and yeah. Um, Everything is fermented in, in barrels, like all the whites, they are fermenting in, in barrels, different size of, uh, of barrels. So we're having normal 228s uh, and up to 600 liter barrels. Um, they stay all in the barrel for about a year. So until next harvest and just before the next harvest, we wreck them out of barrel for the main part of the whites and we wreck them to tank. While wrecking them, we take again like all the leaves with us, putting them in stainless steel with all the leaves and letting them sit another half year on their full leaves in a stainless steel tank. And then just before bottling, uh, we wreck them clean in another tank and then we bottle it uh, like uh, again like three, four weeks after wrecking it. Uh, so that's like in general what we do with our whites, but some of our uh, cuvées, they are so small, they're just like 128 barrel. So those wines we don't wreck, they just stay like 18 months in barrel uh, without moving them. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just better for, for the wine quality, like so small volumes. Um, so then to start with, with the 2019 whites, uh, we start with the entry level uh, of Weisburgunder. So it's a Pinot Blanc. 
uh, it's the same as for the Spade Burgunder. It's a, a vineyard plant and uh, even from different regions. Uh, but it's all the soil type is all on Lös as well. Um, so a, a main part is again from the Kaiserstuhl and another main part is uh, uh, from some villages around Staufen. Um, this part, uh, like in, in there, we used quite a bit of, uh, of larger format barrels. There are quite a bit of 600 liter barrels in this cuvee, um, but some small barrels as well. And then, as I was explaining, uh, it stayed uh, one year on, on the full lease and, and barrel. Then we wrecked it to stainless steel, blended all the barrels together, uh, was sitting on the full lease in the stainless steel uh, for another half year uh, until bottling, kind of. Um, to explain as well, like what we do with sulfur, um, so. All our wines mainly they stay one year uh, without sulfuring. It's for red and whites kind of the same. They stay one year more or less uh, in barrel without any sulfur. And when we start moving the wine or when the cellar is warming up, then we start little by little uh, to sulfur in tiny doses to wine. So we're adding a gram here, a gram there, maybe sometimes two, whatever the wine needs. And, uh, and then the wine sits again like the another half year in barrel or on tank and then we add another gram or two uh, before just before bottling. And so this is just what we did for the entry level uh, Weisburgunder and for the others as well. Um, then the next wine would be um, the Filzen Chardonnay. Um, it's a single vineyard wine. It's coming from from the Kirchberg, so it's the same vineyard or the same slope actually as as our Bellen cuvées, but it's a little bit more like on a southern part of this uh, of this hill, uh, and like this this subsection, like there is a uh, a pass called Filzen, and and that's how we named like this cuvée uh, of Chardonnay. And uh, it was a tiny quantity, so it's it's one barrel, and uh, so this wine stayed in, indeed uh, eighteen months in this barrel, and then we uh, we wrecked it just before bottling out of barrel uh, from the lease, and then we bottled it. It's kind of three four weeks later. Um, the next cuvee would be then the Bellen Weißburgunder. Uh, the Bellen Weißburgunder is as well a tiny quantity. It's the same. It's uh, it was a 350 barrel actually, and um, it this cuvee is from or this vineyard is um, as well from on limestone. It's like the same as for for the Bellen vineyards. It's all this sandy kind of limestone. Uh, it's so the soil is a mixture of clay and sand in it and, and some chunks of, of uh, limestone and um, the plant material is actually quite old like this is like uh, the particularity on, on this uh, cuvee that's why we keep it separate even if it's just one barrel but uh, um, it's plant material from the 50s uh, it was planted at 54 I guess or 55 I don't I don't remember exactly. And what is quite interesting, so it's mainly Pinot Blanc, but as it was back in the days, they, they got the plant material from wherever. Uh, and it's definitely not clonal. Uh, there is even some, you can find some Chardonnay in it, and uh, there is a, a tiny bit of Pinot Gris or whatever. So it's, uh, it's not like this pure, actually. Uh, um, what makes it a little bit in a special kind of this plot. Um, so that's why we're keeping it uh, always separate. Um, so yeah, it was fermenting in barrel. Uh, we wrecked it out of barrel after a year uh, in, a, in a small stainless steel tank. And uh, again on the full lease. Uh, then we wrecked it clean just before bottling. And uh, 
then it went to bottle. The next, uh, then we have like this new cuvee because we have the, this, this new vineyard. Um, it's the uh, Weißburgunder am Kreuz. Um, it's uh, a Weißburgunder from granitic or gneiss soil, like an acidic soil, uh, in Staufen di direct. And uh, the, the Weißburgunder part is quite old wines as well. It's uh, planted in the 60s, so in the beginning 60s. Um, it's probably not clonal either, how, uh, at least how the plant material looks like, um, but who knows. In the 60s, some when it started that they used uh, clonal material, but uh, it's, it's really started from more in the 70s. So probably it's non-clonal Pinot Blanc as well. And uh, so soil type is different. Uh, it's really sandy. Uh, uh, there is almost no clay in it. Um, it's kind of red uh, sand from the knies. Um, uh, this wine or this cuvee was two barrels and um, so it got whole punch pressed. Uh, it was fermenting into used barrels. Uh, then after one year we wrecked it uh, with the full lease, the stainless steel. Just before bottling we wrecked it again clean from the lease and then it went to bottle. Um, yeah, it gives an interesting touch like the soil, uh, like a difference uh, compared to the limestone soil, Pinot Blancs. Um, and then the last uh, cuvee it would be the Weißburgunder Möhling, or for the, for the Pinot Blancs. And the Weißburgunder Möhling, uh, it's uh, again on, on limestone. And it's from, from the Ölberg, so this uh, east-facing, uh, south-east-facing vineyard uh, on, on a limestone cliff, kind of. And uh, the main part of, uh, of this uh, cuvee is coming from, from qu quite steep uh, terraces. And uh, it's, again, Pinot Blanc planted in the 50s, in the beginning 50s. It's actually the oldest uh, parcel what we're having, or the oldest wines we're having. Um, it, it's again, it's not 100% uh, Pinot Blanc. It's like really a big mixture. There is uh, quite a bit of Chasla in it. There is quite a bit of Chardonnay in it. There is some Pinot Gris, there is some Pinot Noir, there is some, who knows, uh, planted in it. Um, and another part is coming from uh, from the council as well, from this vineyard, uh, where we're having the red cuvee as well. And where Henrik Möbitz, who was farming them before, made his council Pinot Blanc, but we integrated it in, in our Möhling Pinot Blanc because we anyways had too, uh, too, uh, too little amount of, of fruit to make se separate cuvees. Uh, so, but the procedure is again the same uh, as for the Asos, a uh, whole bunch pressed, uh, got to, went to barrel, different sizes, uh, fermented on uh, with a lot of solids, um, stayed in barrel for a year, and then worked to stainless steel with the full lease, and after yeah, after a half year, we wrecked it clean and, and bottled the wine. Yeah, and the last white is, would be the 2020 Gut Edel. So Gut Edel is a Chasler. Uh, it's a German name for, for Chasler. What you mainly find in Switzerland and, uh, uh, and in, uh, in some parts in France, they are close to Switzerland. And as our region in Germany is very close to Switzerland as well, uh, so it's a kind of, uh, in, in Germany, a unique spot where you find this variety, actually, because nobody else is so crazy and growing this fantastic variety um, in, in other parts in Germany. But that being said, like the, the big uh, advantage of this variety is you can pick it with very low sugars. It's getting already ripe with with nine and a half, ten 
10 and a half degrees of alcohol. Uh, so it stays always a very light wine. Um, and what we do, uh, there is, we do a little difference with, with all our other whites. Uh, so there is always a part uh, we destem and we do a skin fermentation with some punch downs, like during 10, 12, 14 days, depends on, on the year. And another, like the main part is directly pressed and uh, we ferment it in a barrel. Uh, and at the end, uh, we blend everything together. In 20, uh, the portion of the skin fermented portion was only probably around 20% because the vineyard where we're getting always the, uh, the skin fermenting portion was very low in yields. It's quite old uh, Chasla for here. It's 40 years old and it always gives like really golden uh, berries uh, and golden bunches. And so this is really the, the good part for uh, for doing like the skin contact. And um, and the other part, which is younger wines, um, we do direct press. But in uh, in this year, it was like, unfortunately, this, this old vineyard was only 20% of the entire cuvee. And so the, the portion of uh, skin contact is a little bit lower in 20 than in, in, in other years before. So at the end, the procedure is a little bit the same. So it sits on, on, on the full lease until we wreck it, but we wreck it a little bit earlier. So it un only stays until, uh, it stayed until May in barrel, uh, this year, May. Uh, and then we wrecked it and then we bottled it uh, completely with any sulfides. So yeah, I think that's like all the whites, what we're doing.